So I am actually trying to mine some gold here. So far I am not successful, but let's try one more time. So first, you have to have this pan. Of course, you can go inside and get a pan, you pay for it. And then come here and get some soil or sand, whatever it is, into this bowl. And then you shake like this. And they have two lines here. And yeah, I forgot why that was meant to be, but after that you do like this. So that when the water goes out, the gold stays behind. But unfortunately, I'm not getting any. Maybe I got one which looks like gold here. Looks like gold. But we'll know that once I'm successful in getting it. Yeah, I got it in my hand here. If I drop it here and it sinks down, it should be gold. Yep, this one went inside. So I got one small particle of gold. Successful. Columbia was once known as the jump of the southern mines. In this video, I welcome you to the Columbia State Historic Park. The town's Gold Rush Era Business District was designated as a state park by Governor Earl Warren in July 1945. Today, we can take a step back in time to experience life in 1850s California. Visiting Columbia is like traveling back in time to the sights, smells and sounds of a 19th century mining town. Located in the heart of the California Motherlode or the California Gold Country, the Columbia State Historic Park is roughly about two and a half hours drive to the east of both San Francisco and San Jose if you take the fastest route following the interstate highways 580 and 205 as well as the California highways 120 and 49. Welcome back to my channel and join me in exploring this legendary California gold town. Hey friends, so right now I am in the parking lot of Columbia State Park. Uh, I'm going to give you a walking tour of this state park and also go and do some gold mining. So let's get started. Conveniently located off the Highway 49, Columbia is an easy and scenic drive that neighbors other historic towns in the Sierra Nevada foothills including Sonora, Jamestown and Angels Camp making it a popular destination for day trippers and weekenders alike. Columbia is also easy on the budget with free admission, free parking and free guided tours of the town by docents. This historic state park includes almost 30 buildings built during the California Gold Rush, most of which remain today. It was declared a National Historic Landmark in 1961. Columbia's streets are lined with a variety of shops and boutiques with many specializing in 19th century goods, restaurants, ice cream parlors, candy stores, saloons and a tea house stand ready to quench your thirst, satisfy a sweet tooth and fill your appetite. You can also see merchants dressed in the 1850s attire, a whiff of coal smoke from the blacksmith shop and the rumble of a stagecoach pulling into the town. What better way to start the tour of the Columbia State Historic Park than having some delicious candies at the Nelson's Candy Kitchen. 
for five generations, the Nelson family has delighted visitors with the finest handmade candies and confections in the Sierra foothills. Pure and fresh ingredients cooked in bright copper kettles and cooled on marble tables that are over 100 years old. Check this place out if you are here. Gold was discovered in the area that became Columbia on March 27, 1850 and was one of the richest finds of the California gold rush. The surface level deposits were amenable to placer mining but lacked water needed for such operations. Over the next seven years, a network of water supply aqueducts was built to the area to support mining operations. By 1852, sufficient water was arriving to support the development of a mining boom town and large scale mining operations began in 1856. The town was incorporated in 1854 and its population fluctuated in the 1850s between 2,000 and 5,000 people. The town was repeatedly struck by fire and much of the construction after an 1857 fire was in brick. Today, Columbia State Historic Park is one of the few remaining towns reminiscent of the California Gold Rush era and it's amazing how well preserved it is. The train crew often break off the tooth and leave the roots. Or even worse, break out part of the jawbone along with the tooth. Its only advantage was that a strong enough twist to remove the tooth rapidly. Oh God, where is it? Well, Ed, I think you're off the hook this time. Looks like I can just... You can spend the whole day here enjoying fun activities for the whole family. You can pan for gold, explore exhibits, ride the stagecoach, discover unique shops and learn about the rich history of the California Gold Rush on a guided town tour. Summers can get hot and weekends can get crowded, so aim to arrive early in the morning. The park's calendar is also filled with great events year-round. Be sure to check for the holiday celebrations, performances and exhibits. One building that still continued to exist from that gold rush period is the town jail. Since Columbia was not the county seat, it was not designed for long-term prisoner stays. It is far from roomy and was not designed for comfort. Built during the 1860s, this tiny, solid building remained in use until the late 1930s. Inside are two cells and a small space where the jailer could keep an eye on the bad guys. Wooden doors front the two cells with small openings next to each, through which food may have been passed to the prisoners inside. The sturdy brick and stone construction along with a heavy iron door provided what appears to be an effective quick lockup. The two cells in this structure are cramped. There are no windows or openings to allow in light or air. The space for the jailer which allows access to the cells is not any bigger. Except for keeping a jailer out of the weather, that space would almost seem like a cell, except the double iron doors which served as the only entrance and source of light and air supply for the building filled almost one end. Based on its current appearance, there was no source of heating. However, in the days before the roof was restored, there might have been a single burner wood stove for the comfort of the jailer. How did I get 
Where this Columbia engine company stands today, there were a series of wooden structures on this lot from the early 1850s until 1861. They were used for a variety of purposes including a home and a fruit stand. In 1861, the engine company leased the small one-story building that then occupied the lot and used it as a firehouse. In 1910, the building was torn down. In 1911, the present structure was built. In 1952, the state purchased the firehouse for $1 and added the garage to the back of the building in 1957. Another historic landmark in the state park is this Wilson McConnell house. James Wilson, a Norwegian immigrant shoemaker, purchased the property and brick building to the right in 1869. The brick building housed his shop, living quarters were in the rear. Wilson died in 1876, leaving his widow, Rose and eight children. This home had been planned and she saw to its completion in 1878. Dr. and Mrs. James McConnell purchased the properties in 1941, restored the home, moving into it in 1943. Geraldine McConnell, widowed in 1961, continued to reside here till her death in 2003. The Ebler's Leather and Saddlery Emporium is located on the main street. They specialize in a wide variety of quality leather goods including boots, jackets, belts, wallets, purses and more. You will also enjoy browsing through their large selection of jewelry, western wear and personalized souvenirs. You will also find them creating beautiful custom saddles or demonstrating the lost arts of leather work in the workshop located in the store. In the Columbia State Historic Park, you can even bowl for free in an antique bowling alley next to the museum. Here you can even stay at a historic hotel. All of the rooms in these historic hotels inside the park feature Victorian era furniture and very ornate wallpaper which will instantly transport you back to the 19th century. Johnson's Livery Stable, established in 1989, is the only building on Main Street that is neither original nor a reproduction of an original. It was used for the pilot for the Young Riders TV series. After the filming was completed, the film company avoided taking the time or expense to remove the structure by donating it to the state park. The park administration felt that the need for a structure to store and display artifacts outweighed the negative aspects of introducing a non-historic structure onto the main street. Well, who could have imagined that a state park would have shopping? Well, Columbia does not disappoint at all. Taking a stroll down the main street, you will easily find the grocery and general store, leather shop, book shop, blacksmith shop, hobby, toy shop, candle shop, as well as an old-fashioned candy store. You can even buy old-fashioned clothing to really look the part during your time here. One building that particularly caught my attention was this Masonic temple built in 1854. 
in the early 1850s there were several wooden structures built on the lot where the masonic temple now stands in 1853 charles cardinal purchased a three story frame building that was on the property cardinal ran the saint charles restaurant on the first floor and the saint charles hotel on the other two floors after the building was destroyed in the great fire of 1854 a three story brick structure was built on the lot the masons used the upper floor of this building in 1863 the masons bought the lower floor in 1950 the present building was constructed by the grand lodge of free and accepted masons and given to the state in exchange for a 50 year lease next i went to this museum to brush up on a few historical facts on colombia it's a small museum but it's packed with a whole bunch of information in the museum you can view an interesting selection of gold rush era artifacts and photographs and there's even an area where the kids can dress up in period clothing i can tell you that you will be overwhelmed with the amount of information available in this museum regarding the gold rush era i came to know that between the 1850s and 1870s over 1/2 billion dollars in gold compared to today's value was mined in this area For some good food, definitely check out the Jack Douglas Saloon on the main street. I really enjoyed the food here. The ambience is awesome. If you want to buy some handcrafted soap and candles head out to the Seven Sisters Soap and Candle Company on the Broadway Street. It is a unique candle and soap shop from the gold rush days with the largest selection of handmade candles in the mother load. Next I went to the Matlot Gulch Mining Company on the main street for gold panning lessons. All the way to the top of the water and then stick the vial inside of the water. Yeah. 
Okay, so on the gold pan there are two lines here. They're called ripples. And under the first ripple here, we're going to find most of the gold in the deck. So okay. put one hand here and one hand here. And I'm going to be working with you. So first we're going to put some water in there. We're going to shake it around. Shake, shake, shake. And then we're going to dip it and we're going to try and get and like dump some of that sand up. We're going to shake, shake, shake. And we're going to do this until we have a small amount of uh, water left, I mean the sand left inside of the uh, thing. And then uh, I'll show you a technique video called swirling. And then that'll, uh, that'll show you how to hold that. Keep hold that. We don't want to do, we want to do like this sort of slope. We don't want to waste too much of that sand. That sand is going to hold that. Okay, so Are you in my Okay, so now I'm going to show you the technique of the panel pick. And so then what we do is we just tap, tap, tap. And then put the water down and we just swirl it. Trying to get a little bit at the top. Stay there. Oh. Oh, okay. See? There's yeah, two pieces yeah. there. Okay, so take your index finger, dry it off on your shirt. You want to make sure it's your finger's always dry. Yeah. And touch the gold. Is it on your finger? Okay, now touch the gold to the tip of there. You put the cup? Yes, and it should sink in. Okay. There you go. Okay, and then do that again. I'll bring your other pieces. And then just touch it to the tip of the water again. Two more right there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, in the water. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, it's, it's easier if you dry it off. I mean, yeah. Okay, it sticks a little bit better. Oh. And then I'm going to do the swirling trick one more time, yeah. just to make sure that all the sand that's up in there, I mean all the gold that's up in there, is out of the sand. Come on. We'll get it down in one spot so we don't lose any of it. And, then again, we're just it around. and you see, as you'll see as I'm doing this, there's these little tiny uh, gemstones in there. Yeah. And you can take those if you want to and put them inside of your vial. Okay. What are those? These ones? The yeah, these little, little, little purple ones, right? Oh, okay. okay. Look like that. A little gemstone. And then you can put that in your vial too as you want. Okay, and there's dirt at the bottom of the trough. Okay. And so when uh, you got done, you like if you find no gold, then you're just gonna stick it down there yeah. and scoop up some more dirt, and then repeat the process. You're gonna do exactly what I showed you. You're just gonna shake it, yeah. and then dip it slowly and pull it up yeah. three times. And then once you get the water back, then you're gonna shake it again. Uh, when you guys are done, you can there's a you see that there's a block right there at the end of the stairs. Okay. And you just stick the pan in either of the two slits that are in there. Um, the trough, uh, this pan doesn't leave the trough here. So if you guys are gonna go somewhere else, uh, it can't go. You guys, you have to stick it back in there. And if you guys come back before we close yeah. uh, today, uh, take that inside the shop and show it to us, and we'll get you guys your pans back, and you guys can continue to do it. Okay. 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 Uh, have a good time. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Yeah, one looks more like silver though. Water is not thick. Mm -hmm. So they are doing what? 
So I took my car and came all the way up here to the cemetery at the Columbia State Park and also behind me you can see the famous schoolhouse. I think if you climb those stairs, walk all the way across the road, on the other side the cemetery continues. It's kind of spooky here, I'm the only guy anywhere near the cemetery. So I don't want to spend more time here, let's get out of here. There are three separate cemeteries at the end of Schoolhouse Street in Columbia. It is considered to be Cemetery Street but there are no signs and that name does not appear on most maps. The three cemeteries have separate gates but all can be accessed from the main entrance. The three cemeteries are Columbia Odd Fellow Cemetery, Columbia Masonic Cemetery and Columbia Public Cemetery. Prior to the mining in Colombia, the cemetery was located northwest of the main street and in 1855 it was moved here. That is the schoolhouse. Built in 1860 of locally made sun dried bricks at a cost of $5,000, it is California's first two storied brick schoolhouse. That's the way to go to the schoolhouse. I don't think I have time to explore it today because the gate closes at 4 30, so I had to get out of here. The Columbia State Historic Park also organizes many events and festivals throughout the year such as the Equestrian Parade, Big Band Street Dance, Farmers Market, Harvest Festival, Miners Christmas as well as Halloween and 4th of July events. So you can check out their calendar and plan your visit accordingly. If you enjoyed this video. Please don't forget to like and share the video and subscribe to my channel Live to Travel to get instant notification when I upload new videos please press that bell icon Thanks for watching this video see you in the next video